Welcome friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, with another edition of Propaganda Watch. And this week, we're going to be looking at a listener submission. Uh, Paul wrote in a couple of months ago, so thank you for that, Paul. I am getting to it. Uh, he wrote in and sent along a couple of images from a magazine, specifically Modern Mechanics magazine, from way back in April of 1937. And uh, Paul parenthetically adds in his email message to me that this is from a time when people actually made things, which is one of the things that's interesting about this little time capsule from another era. Uh, and if you go and look at the front cover, you'll notice another interesting part of this. There's a teaser or a the title of one of the articles in this edition of Modern Mechanics, Ships That Vanish by William McPhee. Ships that vanish? Wait, Philadelphia Experiment was 43, not 37. Anyway, interesting. Um, but perhaps the most interesting part of this comes from the guest editorial by none other than our good friend J. Edgar Hoover. And of course, devoted Corbett reporters know all about J. Edgar Hoover, if from if only from episode 257 of the Corbett Report podcast, Lies the FBI Told Me, where we went into some of the history of Hoover and his uh, time at the helm of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and his stranglehold over that organization for well, the better part of half a century. Um, an incredible tale and one that uh, you should re-familiarize yourself with if you have forgotten it in the meantime. Of course, Hoover also, as you would expect, parenthetically and uh, tangentially uh, makes a an appearance in any number of stories that we cover here on the Corporate Report. Uh, you could, for example, the MLK story, which obviously we covered last year in the uh, episode 334, Truth at Last, the Assassination of Martin Luther King. So again, J. Edgar Hoover of the FBI, I'm sure he needs no introduction. And in this edition of Modern Mechanics from April of 1937, he wrote a guest editorial, which reads as follows. It's titled, Your Fingerprints. And it's it reads... Quote, America can have widespread fingerprint identification only through education concerning its benefits. Here is an agency which can be looked upon by the average citizen as proof of identity and of good standing in a community. It must be looked upon as its protector in case of accident, amnesia, loss of identity, or death through circumstances which make his identification under ordinary means impossible. As conditions exist today, the criminal who is found dead may be returned to his loved ones for decent burial and the eradication of the uncertainty, the worries, the fears, and torments which descend upon a family when one of its members has been lost for years. However, the honest citizen who dies under such circumstances and who is not protected by his fingerprint identification goes to a grave in a potter's field and his family sorrows for years in ignorance of his fate. <laughs> I mean... You gotta give it to him. It's, it's very colorful. Uh, it costs nothing to file a civil fingerprint card in the Federal Bureau of Investigation in Washington. There are now cards of 200,000 reputable citizens on file. Everyone's doing it. Why don't you? A total of 600 such cards are being received every day. There is no stigma to such a method of identification. It is a badge of honor. It should give one a standing in the community. It should be a letter of recommendation to any bank or insurance or business institution. And it should be the duty of good, citi the duty of good citizens everywhere to assume the leadership in this movement by preaching its usefulness to employees and friends everywhere. Sincerely, J. Edgar Hoover, Director, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Okay. Wow. What do you say about that? I mean, yes, the, I think, primary and, and first urge is to just chuckle at the old timiness of all of this and the rather florid language which Hoover is using to describe this program. But it is, of course, much uh, darker than that. And I think we can see that from today's perspective. The Oh, our loving director of the FBI urging good citizens to prove their their good standing in the community and to to take this badge of honor and this this uh, protection of fingerprint identification. Just send your fingerprints into the FBI. We'll hold them in good stead and we'll we'll be good stewards of this and it'll be a mark of of honor for you. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous and such a campaign would probably not fly in this day and age, but don't let that smugness about the old-timey propaganda inoculate us to the fact that it is happening today, just under different guises and obviously with different technology. Update it for the 21st century, and what do you get? Well, again, dedicated corporate reporters will 
uh, have a pretty good inside track on where this story goes from here. Um, for example, episode 118 of the Corbett Report, Who Owns Your DNA, covered this story in some degree of detail, talking about different aspects of the DNA databases, plural, that are being constructed all around the world, or were being constructed all around the world at that time, nearly a decade ago, that, that uh, podcast coming from 2010. So we talked about the various uh, DNA databases that were already underway at that time. And the the important issue of ownership of that data. Who owns your DNA? That is not a trivial question, and it has all sorts of important ramifications. Uh, this is also a topic that touches on uh, another important video from a few years back that most people probably forgot or didn't see in the first place. You are being programmed to accept the global ID control grid. So if you haven't seen that video, please go back and watch or rewatch it. But I do go, go into more detail about the global identification grid that is being constructed. And uh, in that, it might as well have been a Propaganda Watch episode. We looked at some uh, old-timey photos of uh, identification back when Social Security was a new thing and Social Security IDs and everything were new and people were scared. Why do we need an ID number from the government? This is totalitarianism. How far have we come now that... uh, People blindly and blithely accept any form of any any number of intrusions into their their privacy and take any number of identification numbers from the government without so much as blinking about it. Um, so that's an important part of this story. But of course, in the modern day and age, it's not just about your fingerprints, although they still do matter and still are collected as international travelers are increasingly becoming familiar with. For example, anyone entering the lovely land of the rising sun here, like myself and many millions of others, have had to do the uh, electronic fingerprint scanning um, and digital face photo, of course, for facial recognition. And uh, of course, that's being implemented worldwide in any number of states at this point. So it's increasingly hard to evade that particular dragnet. But here's another angle, perhaps an even more important one, which I just broached. DNA. Yes, you are very dna The the building blocks of who you are and what you are. Uh, the blueprint for your biome is increasingly coming into the hands of law enforcement. This time, not from so much from uh, feel-good propaganda campaigns like J. Edgar Hoover writing editorials in Modern Mechanics, but just simply through the back door, with people, bizarrely enough, volunteering to give their DNA, their genetic blueprint, up to companies that will take them and tell you that you have, you know, X percentage of such and such ancestry and X percentage of such and such. Oh, yay. Now with that valuable information, my life is complete. And oh, by the way, my DNA itself, the data that makes up who I am is now on store with some company somewhere. I don't know what their rules and regulations and privacy limitations are. I'm sure it's all good. Well, don't be so sure about that. Um, As has been revealed in Uh, A number of ways over the recent years. Uh, For example, Atlanta News Now, AJC.com, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, has this uh, article. Can police legally obtain your DNA from uh, 23andMe, Ancestry.com? And the first paragraph of that, uh, that article writes, The DNA you send in the mail through genetic kits and ancestry programs like 23andMe and Ancestry can be used by police in a criminal investigation. But it doesn't happen very often. Well, if that isn't particularly comforting to you, it shouldn't be. And you can get more detail on that even from mainstream enormity sites like USA Today. Took an Ancestry DNA test? You might be a genetic informant unleashing secrets about your relatives. And uh, this goes into uh, uh, greater detail about the, the process and mechanics of this, talking about popular sites like 23andMe and Ancestry.com, as well as um, something called GED Match a Florida-based website that pools raw genetic profiles that people share publicly. (laughs) And, of course, it goes into the fact that, yes, 23andMe and Ancestry uh, DNA will share your ancestry, or share your DNA profile with law enforcement, but only if they're subpoenaed and only if through a valid legal process, blah, 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 blah. In other words, yes, they do and will and have presumably shared that DNA data believe there are stories indicating as much. Um, But 
uh, it goes even further with this GED match where people apparently are willingly and publicly sharing their genetic profiles, where, of course, there's no warrant or any other type of legal process necessary to access that information. So law enforcement, you better believe it, are making use of that. Um, and it's only, th this intrusion is only getting worse and worse. And it's not just about you specifically, you, the person yourself who sent in your DNA, idiot that you are uh, to one of these companies. It's not only you yourself who are affected by this, but as research is increasingly showing, your entire family, uh, your related relatives, even distant relatives, it starts to create this web where you only need a few percentage points of the population to send in their DNA in order to have a genetic profile of the majority of the population. That's how this works. You don't need your DNA particularly, but if you have your brothers and your sisters and your mothers and your uncles and your nephews and whatever else, then yes, you can create a pretty good uh, genetic uh, profile of yourself you who did not do this and did not consent. So keep that in mind, but um, of course it just gets worse and worse. Uh, this in from Counterpunch by John W. Whitehead from just uh, January of this year. Uncle Sam wants your DNA, the FBI's plan to create a nation of suspects. Going into more detail about this. And then the latest, um, just from February of this year, uh, from Engadget, at home DNA testing company gives the FBI access to its database. Family Tree DNA says the partnership won't violate users' privacy, though. Yeah, it's always the same. It's always only for the good of everyone. Oh, it'll be good. It'll be like sunshine. Don't worry. I mean, law enforcement isn't going to abuse this in any way, and we can just give as much information as possible to them, and it's fine, and it's only for legal purposes, and blah de blah de blah blah Meanwhile, they're setting up the facial recognition camera control grid, and you know, sign and cross-referencing that to your social credit score, which is coming to a country near you, and cross-referencing that to your DNA profile, which will be used to create the bioweapons, which, oh yeah, the Project for New American Century inserted into the Rebuilding America's Defense document in September of 2000, but don't worry too much about that. It is quite the nightmarish web that is being woven around us right now, and as tempting as it is to laugh at the Hoover editorial and old-timey propaganda like that, it was only the uh, the very thin edge of a very big wedge, which we are starting to see in much greater detail now. I hope you will check into the many references in the show notes of this video so that you are better informed about this situation and why it might not be a good idea to voluntarily share your fingerprints, your DNA, or any other private data with companies or law enforcement, however much they may try to frame it in a good way. That's going to do it for this week. I am James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Thanking you for joining me.